After two weeks, our creative team is back in the studio. And the first thing we did was watch the WWDC 22 keynote. Overall, it's not very exciting because it feels like Apple didn't do much for iPad OS and Mac OS this year. However, there are a few features we can't wait to try out. Hey guys, it's Rob Seepak with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Please note, these features will also be available on iPad OS 16, even though Apple mostly demonstrated them on iOS 16. The improvements to the lock screen in iPad OS 16 are quite exciting. Your photos now go in front of your time versus behind, which is what we've had up until now. You can also customize the font and color to give your lock screen a personal touch. What's more useful is that you can even add widgets to your lock screen. That means you can easily access important information without unlocking your device. You can save several lock screens for different reasons and easily switch between them. Which is more useful with Focus. If you've already been using Focus, you will love this. Your notifications and Apple Music play controls now appear at the bottom of the screen. That way, they don't cover your beautiful photos, which we thought was very thoughtful. This is Apple's biggest update for this year across all their devices. It is well thought out, especially for those that heavily use their phones. But it's nothing to jump around for. Editing sent messages is cool. So is unsending them. Marking messages as unread is not that useful. Why not just read messages when you're ready to respond to them? Then you don't have to mark them as unread. But we're trying to keep an open mind here. So it could be useful for some people. Thank you, Apple, for making it easier for us to switch from dictation to typing. Now we can enjoy using the feature more. The need to switch between dictation and the keyboard was the main reason I personally disliked using this feature, and I can't wait to try it in iOS 16. Oh, iPad OS 16. For the M2 MacBook Air, Apple brought back the MagSafe charging port. The confusion at Apple is annoying, especially if you bought the M1 MacBook. Pass keys are a very interesting concept that we wish Apple had taken more time to demonstrate. We can't help but wonder how this will differ from what LastPass does. The idea of a passwordless life is tempting, but just how secure is it really? All questions we would love to answer once we try it out ourselves. Before we get to our final verdict, there are a few small updates worth mentioning. Handoff for FaceTime is awesome. Is anyone else tired of cutting calls when you need to switch devices? Most certainly are. Find and replace in Apple Notes is also going to be very useful. Can't wait to try it out. Hopefully it will work with handwriting. That's just us asking for too much, isn't it? Desktop class apps deserved a bit more time during the keynote. I guess we'll also be trying that one for the different apps that they updated. Files, pages, etc. For the most part, it feels Apple wants to have the same features on all its devices for universal user experience. That is actually a good thing because every device you pick up will feel familiar. However, it also means there is not a lot to be excited about because nothing is new or groundbreaking. The spotlight improvements we are getting in macOS Ventura have been on iPad OS and iOS for years now. We're happy about customizing our toolbars for apps in iPad OS, but that feature has been available for Mac OS apps for years. It seems Apple didn't have any time to look at our wish list for Apple Notes iPad OS updates. You can understand our disappointment, right? Freeform, the new app just feels like a Nebo ripoff. They now created an infinite canvas for Apple Notes, but instead of adding it to the already existing Notes app, they chose to create a completely different application for it. So from first impressions, Freeform just feels like an infinite canvas version of Apple Notes. 
As you can tell from our very short list of features we are excited about, there is plenty we don't like about the updates announced during the WWDC 22 keynote. However, our team thought it best to try these features first before commenting on them, so be sure to stay tuned for when we start testing out the public beta for these operating systems. Is Apple's universal user interface part of a bigger plan, or did they just run out of ideas this year? Let us know what you think. For Apple Notes, however, we did give them plenty of ideas for free. So, perhaps they have a bigger plan, seeing they ignored all of our ideas. We hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, fantastic human, for watching. See you in the next video.